Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have with us a Benedictine Father Robert Nixon from the Abbey of the Most Holy Trinity in New Norcia, Western Australia. And Western Australia is the wild, wild west. So uh, we're going to have a real rich time with Father and we're going to be contemplating uh, his recent translation of Thomas Akempis Meditations on Death preparing for eternity. I can't think of a more important topic. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, back in the day, there was uh, when the Roman general would win a great victory, he would, be, he would march into Rome. Well, he would march towards Rome, leave his army on the other side of the Rubicon, at least he was supposed to, and then they would have a great triumph for him, and they would march through, uh, through Rome with all of their captured, uh, you know, all, the, all their prizes they had won in the battle as this general won a great war and everyone would be cheering for him and shouting for him. But there would be a slave stand uh, walking behind him, a servant walking behind him just a few paces back. And he would say the words, memento mori, memento mori, memento mori, which simply means remember your death. We all have to live like we're gonna die. And when you study uh, the, the monks of the early monks of the desert the, and the church fathers I have all their volumes of books behind me they also had that same tradition the ascetics out in the deserts like in North Africa uh, they may not see each other very often the monks there maybe only once a week or once a month but when they did gather they didn't have they didn't have idle conversation but the one thing they did say to each other was memento mori remember your death um, they had they all may have had a book of Psalms Maybe they had a gospel in the cave they lived in. Most of them had a skull, though. And that meditation on the reality of death uh, is what makes us really alive to the reality of the possibility of, of, of heaven. You know, we, we know for sure that we're going to either spend eternity in heaven or in hell. Death is our ticket. And so to meditate on that is, is very important. And so we have today a guide, Father Robert Nixon, uh, Benedictine from the Abbey of Most Holy Trinity, New Norcia, Western Australia. Father, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's uh, fantastic to be with you today. <laughs> oh, well, we love the surfers out on the west side of Oz. You know, they're known. It's, known to, it, it's the Wild West out there. There's no doubt. Uh, I remember one it time. Is, I, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a whole different it's a whole different gambit out there than than being over on the Sunshine Coast or being uh, you know over in, in in that side of Australia. And I well, I was surfing once in uh, in California, and uh, there, I had a famous surf photographer filming us as we were. I was lifting my partner in tandem lifts, and he was there to, sh to shoot us. But there was someone there that uh, saw David on the beach, and they all the surfers are like, "Oh, good, I can get my I, my picture on the cover of Surfer Magazine," and so they. Uh, one of them kept dropping in on me and my tandem partner. And that's kind of dangerous because I'm about to lift, put her in a lift. And as we're surfing down the wave, he would drop in and then do a cutback because he's like, dude, David Putu is filming on the beach. I'm going to be famous. Well, eventually, by the third time, Father, as he did the cutback, I told Mary, watch this. He wants to be famous. I'll make him famous. So as he did the cutback, I surfed right between his legs, above his surfboard between his legs. And he's lying on my... Uh, surfboard looking up at Mary as I'm about to lift her doing kind of like the dying cockroach and when I got to the beach it was so funny because there was a guy there from Mar from uh, Margaret River right on the west side and he goes brah he just he just broke uh, the second of the Ten Commandments of surfing thou shall not snake thou shall not drop in so I had that I had that 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 so totally different kind of character uh, from the west, west side there to, I'm ready to go fight the guy first of all and then he saw what I did and he saw and David said don't worry he'll, he'll make the cover well he made the inside back cover of Surfer Magazine and from then on he was called the snake but that was my first introduction to someone from the west side of Oz so it's I know you guys are tough out there <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, we're 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 geographically a huge state, but a uh, tiny population, and most of the state is either desert or mangrove swamp up north. So yeah, we're um, we are a pretty wild place, and a lot of people in Australia haven't even um, visit from the eastern side, which is where our population is. I've never even made it over there. I didn't even come over until I joined the monastery here. So I'm originally from North Queensland, far North Queensland. Yeah, beautiful area. Diagonal beautiful area up it there. It is. And, and if anyone has ever seen the movie Crocodile Dundee, that's like my native, um, <laughs> native land. Yeah. Like Brisbane, that area, from, that area. Oh, no, much, much further north. Oh, okay, okay. Right up I, in the... Getting up towards the New Guinea side of it. I used to surf uh, yeah. in, in Noosa every year, a contest every year there. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love our Oz, Oz, but I know you've also spent some time in London, and, and uh, I, I can't, can you tell me, I, it's better for you, if, me, if you help me. I know you, you have yeah. a, a, in music and, and. Yeah. So, so you know, my, um, my, my, my great love in life, of course, is God and the faith, but my other great love is is music which kind of in a way goes hand in hand and um when i i always had a sense that i had a vocation to the service of the church but i also had this passionate drive to be a musician and um so i spent the the first few years of my life uh, you know studying music and then as a professional musician um and then involved in church music as well of course and then um after a certain period of time when i thought i'd done all i had to do as a musician I decided to join the church as a priest. But my first step wasn't to join a monastery because my ideas of monasteries were largely just from books and movies. I kind of thought of them as something medieval. You know, I admired mm -hmm. them, but never thought about them as a real possibility. And I knew a lot of parish priests and I knew they were needed. So I went in to, to study for that. I got to the end of the studies of that. I was just due to be ordained as a diocesan priest when I decided I'm going to go and check out a Benedictine monastery. Yes. And I did, and I, I fell in love with the, the life. It was a very difficult decision, of course. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's really been a great fulfillment. The, the life of contemplation and of prayer. And at our own monastery, we, we have a lot of um, ministerial aspect as well. We run a lot of retreats. We place a lot of emphasis on, on liturgy and so forth. So it's a, it's a wonderful... Um, vocation for those who are called to this type of yeah life. and it's and, definitely you, know, I know mm. you have a special relationship with the benedictines as an oblate yourself there yes i do you you know i i uh i love the benedictines i love saint benedict um and it was the benedictines that had such an impact on my when i was 19 years old and the i went to the pecos benedictine monastery in northern new mexico back i'm going to tell you almost over 50 years ago uh, and uh, there I met uh, Father Michael and Sister Mary Jo. And I think at that time, Father Michael was Brother Michael. But those two then came from, from uh, New Mexico and planted a monastery here in Hawaii. So when I came to Hawaii, there they were. The two people that meant the most to me back in the days were there. And so I went, I started going to the monastery and seeking to be an oblate. And I think I was the longest person it took them to accept to be an oblate i think i was 10 years i was a white belt you know like in martial arts but eventually right? yeah i just because i traveled a lot and, and a ministry was happening and so but i just i just love them love the benedictine order and i'm so glad to be uh an, a benedictine oblate but you this book um that you've written uh the tank publishing meditations on death preparing for eternity i mean that's what it's all about uh, by Thomas Akempis. I love Thomas Akempis. I love to listen to his, you know, when I go to sleep at night, I like to listen to his writings, uh, The Imitation of Christ. They're so deep and so mm -hmm. humble. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about who Thomas Akempis is? Why you were drawn to yeah. translate this? So, so Thomas Akempis was born in 1480. Uh, in Holland, so the borders between Germany and, and Holland were not kind of as fixed as what they are today. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, firstly began his life. He had, had parents of fairly humble class. His dad was a blacksmith, 
His mum was a village school teacher. He went on to join a, a group called the Brotherhood of Common Life, which was um, a kind of religious group, but without vows. So they lived a type of monastic existence, but not necessarily with a lifelong commitment. It was a, a little bit like a, a Catholic student college where they live a, a fairly religious life. And But after a few years of that, um, which was very important because it, it meant that he had a, a sense of bringing spirituality to the lay people or yeah. an idea that even people who weren't committed um, by religious vows should pursue the religious life. After that, he became entered the order of the Kedans, of um, Kedans Regular of the Order of St. Augustine, which is somewhat, well, very monastic in their approach. We have and to take a break. We have to take a br we have to take a break, Father. I can tell once you get rolling, it, we won't be able to stop. So we're at a break. So okay. we'll be right right back. How can people find you, Father Nixon? You can find us if you look at our website, unorsia.com.au. And that dot .au is for Australia. We'll be right back with more of the Indeed. Bear Wozniak adventure and Father Nixon. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're so stoked about our TV series, Long Ride Home, uh, the, the Hawaii episodes. The Hawaii season is just about ready to be packaged and sent to EW10. It'll be airing sometime in the next few months. Twelve episodes of us riding motorcycles here in the islands of Hawaii and uh, seeking to go deeper with God and also to grow in virtue and to just challenge uh, each other and challenge men to go go uh, deeper with God too. So cinematically it's 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 really, really good. And uh, so we're, we're stoked to, to let you know that's happening. If you want the early release, just go to deepadventure.com and join either Mama Bears or the Man Cave, and then you get all of the episodes of Long Ride Home. Uh, there'll be a total of 34 uh, by the time all are released. But you also get to see the episodes before they air it on EWTN. In fact, before EWTN even sees them. Um, and and we, do, uh, we do the final cut uh, once, they're, once they're done re with the review. We're, we want to uh, welcome our guest, Father Robert Nixon. He's uh, uh, Benedictine. Uh, he's at the Abbey of the Most Holy Trinity in New Norcia, Western, Western Australia. Here in Hawaii, Father, we love the Australians. 
We love them. Just love them. I think they're the closest we have, co- closest cousins we have are the people from Oz. And, of course, here in Hawaii, we're so close. And we missed you guys during the during the COVID thing. You were like the last ones to be to be, to be left off the island and to come back to, to Hawaii. So we're glad to have the Aussies back, back, in, back in the house out here. Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Well, uh, the book uh, we're talking about is Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity. Very serious subject and reflections on the last things. Can you can you kind of guide us through uh, as I maybe I'll introduce the chapters and you can kind of give yes. us uh, considerations of one's own death? Yeah. So, um, so Ben, the first section of the book um, is dealing with what's called referred to as the four last things and this is consideration of one's own death the actual event of death itself followed then by the torments of hell the final judgment and the joys of heaven but this consideration of one's death is such a key thing because um, in the rule of saint benedict he tells us we should have death always before our eyes and this was a, a principle not only of the early christians but also of the stoic philosophers Um, of virtually every philosophical tradition that this meditation on death is a useful thing. And it it is the ultimate perspective on the issues of this life, on the various things which we encounter in this life. We can only understand them properly in the context of our own death. And death, you know, it's, it's a certainty. It's the one certainty. They say there are two certainties in life, death and taxes. As a monk, I've kind of escaped the taxes part. (laughs) <laughs> but, but I haven't escaped the death part. Um, and uh, it's an uncertainty, it's a certainty, but it's also an uncertain uncertainty, if that makes sense, paradoxically, because it could strike us at any time, uh, in any way that's most unexpected, you know? It's not like it's an event that we can plan for in advance and get ourselves ready for. Because we never know when it's due. And one point he makes there is that you don't want to leave it until death is actually upon you to start getting yourself ready for death. Because, as he points out, often at this stage, our spiritual and physical and intellectual capacities are not at their best. So when we're getting close to death, it's not the best time to start converting your life and getting your relationship with God in order. Because at that stage, you'll be often working with a bit of an impairment. Yeah, and you know, people, yeah, and people say, Oh yeah, you know what happens if someone at the last minute, you know, repents and gives their life uh, to the Lord? Well, they go to heaven. You know, similar to the 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 one of the the, the men on the cross, ne- you know, next to Jesus. But he talks about deathbed and it, well, thus deathbed repentance is inherently uncertain in its efficacy, since its sincerity is not demonstrated or supported by any works or reformation of life. Mm, it, indeed. So, yes, yeah, so it's a dangerous thing to wait till the last minute and think, okay, I'll make it right then. It, indeed. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit like waiting until you get caught to be sorry for a sin mm, or a crime. Mm. You know, because uh, at this stage, of course, you're sorry for it in a certain sense. But being mm-hmm. sorry for something in the sense that you wish you hadn't done it is not actually the same as being repentant for it. Right. You know? right. And... Uh, if a person has lived a life of sin and they're facing the fires of hell, of course they're going to be sorry that they live a life of sin at that point, but that's not the same as being repentant. So repentance needs to be followed up by action, by, by a real commitment of right. heart. A repentance, and, a rethinking, a re- yeah, new way of life. Right. Even, even the person concerned can't be absolutely sure whether their repentance is really uh, genuine at that moment, at those times uh, of death, when you don't have the opportunity of living further. The only way you could be sure that your repentance is genuine is if you put it into practice. Yeah? So thank, thank God, thank God um, right now, Father, this is the reality. There are many, I don't know how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people listening to this show, but the reality yeah. that I face every time I turn on this microphone is that more than likely, one of those people listening today will be dead before the next show airs. They may come upon them yeah. suddenly. Our conversations here are, are, are serious as a heart attack, literally, quite seriously as a heart attack. 
And one of the things that we, we, we have this sense, modern man has this sense of sort of a cheap grace that like, you know, everybody gets to go to heaven. I mean, I mean, doesn't everybody get to go to heaven? You know, and even all dogs get to go to heaven. But Jesus said that the way to heaven is narrow and very few there are that travel thereon. Can you tell us, can, can we, is it okay to talk about the torments of hell? Yeah. You know, um, I, I think it really does make a lot of sense to talk about that. And, of, of course, in our culture, we, we often shy away from talking about things which are difficult and unpleasant. But that doesn't mean that they're not possibilities, you know. And if we look at the words of Christ himself, as you quoted, if he lived today, I think everyone would be saying, gee, he's a real fire and brimstone preacher. And you read the Gospels and you think, how often did Christ speak about hell? In fact, he spoke about it quite a lot. I think more about hell than heaven in some ways. Well, indeed. He was indeed. warning, warning, warning. So, so we need to take this possibility very seriously. Um, at the same time, have confidence in the efficacy of communion with the church and so forth, but not to take these things for granted. And um, not to take for granted that we have another day, because anyone, no matter how young or old they are, this day could be their very last. Stop right now, Father. Pray for the people listening. Because I know right now there's probably someone listening who won't be here a, a week from now. Pray for the Holy Spirit's conviction to come into their heart right now and to turn their, their hearts to the Lord. Yes, Lord, we pray that your grace may reveal the urgency of our preparation for eternity. That we can't take it for granted that we have another day. That every day, that every hour you give us, is a special gift and you give this to us for one purpose alone to serve you to glorify you to love you and to put ourselves at right with our fellow men we ask this through christ our lord our living savior amen the invitation to christ invites us but we have to respond you know we have to be be willing to turn and mm -hmm. go ahead and now Another important dimension of this uncertainty of life, you know, is to think that the people who we meet on any given day, it might be the last day we meet them. Yes. Either they might be gone or we might be gone. And, you know, when we think these differences or conflicts or whatever that goes on, you know, is that really how we want to possibly say goodbye to this person, mm. you know? So, so to try, and one of the things in the rule of St. Benedict is always to make peace before the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. And I think this is such a, a, a wonderful principle. <laughs> to make peace with our fellow man, to make peace with God, so that at the end of each day, we can think, if I don't rise tomorrow morning, um, I'm ready to face the end. Amen. You know, there is a difference between faith and presumption. And I think a lot of people in the world today <clears throat> they have this sense of easy grace, easy, you know, they think of it, it's, it, it, they think, well, you know, I, I believe in God, you know, but are you living like you believe in God? And f faith is not the same as presumption. That's a presumptuous sort of faith. Real faith rests in the Lord, but also uh, repents and changes and lives and, and lives out the gospel. We're talking with Father Robert Nixon, Benedictine priest from the Abbey of the Holy Trinity, in North Sea, Australia, down under. Um, where can people reach you, Father? Uh, check out our website at uh, newnorcia.com.au. I want to go there. I really do. I hope someday I can make it there. My wife hasn't been to Oz yet, so maybe she'll come. We're, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Broken Places. Jesus calls us to all look for broken people and broken places, because he did. And that means Christians must be a people of what the Old Testament calls shalom, that is, peacemakers. In the Bible, shalom is more than bringing a ceasefire to warn people. Shalom means to bring complete wholeness, well-being, and harmony into all situations in life. Call to places where things are busted up to bring shalom is a serious assignment. 
Some folks are afeard of broken places, like at the gospel mission where I minister from time to time. Some folks often run away from brokenness, like those with uh, physical disabilities, mental illnesses, or addictions. Yep, hard stuff, partner. We learn in chapter 3 of Genesis that sin brought about brokenness within ourselves and our relationship with God, brokenness between each other, and with our environment. Yep. As his people of Shalom, we are called to reflect him by bringing wholeness to broken people, places, and things. And we've got a mighty fine toolkit when we stop and take an inventory, like a shovel to dig out another's car stuck in the mud, repentance and forgiveness to make things right, compassion that remains bedside a person on his or her deathbed, saw and hammer to build a ramp for a wheelchair-bound neighbor, sharing the love and the saving grace of Christ with a sinful, bound-up soul. But it takes more than inventory in our toolkit. Got to have, number one, a desire to look for brokenness, and number two, a willingness to respond to such things, and number three, the commitment to see things through, turning brokenness into wholeness. Blessed are the peacemakers. As such, Jesus said we would prove we are God's daughters and sons. This is Daniel Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men to go to our website, deepadventure.com. The women, we want you to go there too. There's a place, special place there for you. You can join the mama bears. But at the moment, I want to ask the mama bears to grab their husbands and bring them to the website, deepadventure.com, and have them check out our man cave and our school of manliness. Uh, it's, it's a powerful place for a man to go. I, I think of it kind of like the cave of Adullam, where all the misfits... And the ne'er-do-wells showed up with King David in this cave. And God transformed them from these, these uh, knuckle-draggers into the mighty, valiant men of, of David. They formed each other, and God formed them there. And that's why we call men together to, to the man cave. We have a non-Facebook-type community where we share with each other. We have a Zoom meetup with everyone once a month. But then there's this three-year curriculum where if you join right now this month, we'd be in year two, month four. And you would be invited to start right there with us in what we're studying at that time. And so the men go through, the, each month has its own curriculum, audio, video, written, a self-assessment. But this is what I think I want the mama bears to tell their husbands about. The, the young men, say be eight, between the ages of 12 or 21, somewhere in there, they can get their own login credentials. They can't join the man cave. That's for adult men. But the fathers can lead their sons through the school of manliness. Uh, like some of the areas we were talking about uh, now is uh, last month was every man needs to have a code and a creed to live by. Well, that's what the, that is what the rule of St. Benedict is. It's, it's a code to live by. And we have with us today, we're so grateful to have Father Robert Nixon with us. He's a, uh, uh, with the Abbey of the Holy Trinity in North Norcia, Australia. And he's translated... Uh, a book uh, by Thomas Akempis, Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity. Father, I want to read one of the things that you translated. And this, this, this really, really spoke to me. Imagine all the deafening thunder as if resounding through every particle and atom of creation and the irrevocable sentence which will be uttered against the wicked. Go forth, you wicked, into the everlasting fires, prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't think the cancel culture is going to like that. <laughs> it's a, it is pretty uh, extreme, isn't it? And the thing is that it comes from the authority of Christ himself. Mm. And, and Jesus said this, so we can't say, no, it, it's not right or it's you know it's theologically unsound or whatever because mm -hmm. it came from christ himself who is you know the truth who is the incarnation of god and god tells us this so um, obviously it is true 
Um, so that we need to, you know, think about this possibility and we hear, you know, the sheep and the goats and being separated to ask ourselves always, you know, which side am I going to end up on? Mm. And, um, and uh, you know, sometimes we, we think, oh, well, it's, as long as I basically have faith or whatever, then I'm going to be okay. Mm. But um, faith, faith without practice um, is not real faith. You know, how strong can a faith be if it doesn't manifest itself in the way we live and the way we act? So, uh, yeah, so very sobering thought here, the idea of this final judgment. And, uh, you know, it's, it's useful to imagine ourselves be before this awesome tribunal of judgment um, at any time and think how are it we could going be, to It could up? be in one minute. It could it, be one it, minute. Indeed it could. You know, C.S. Lewis uh, made the statement that Ultimately, there's two types of people. There's the type of person who says to God, Thy will be done. And the Lord welcomes him into his kingdom. That's ultimately it. It's thy will be done. That's what being a Christian is saying. Thy will, God. Not my will, thy will. And of course, God's will is love. Because God is love. But then C.S. Lewis says there's another type of person to whom God says, Thy will be done. And their will is to do their own to do their own thing to to reject uh, God's will, which is God's, which is love, and they then are thrown in, thrown into hell. There's the other side of this deafening thunder. Uh, in the next line, it says, "But consider," Thomas Akempis says this, and your translation of his meditations on death. We're talking with Father Robert Nixon. But uh, consider also the sweet and delightful invitation which shall be extended to all the just, calling them to partake in the eternal banquet of indescribable, infinite bliss. Come on to me, oh. you blessed of my Father. What is that? What is that? Can you describe the indescribable? Can you give us a hint, at least, of the, of the joys of heaven? Does, um, does he do that? So, he, so in fact, he, he devotes a, a whole a chapter to the joys of heaven. And I think this is a wonderful thing to contemplate, you know. That a Christian should spend time each day, a little bit of time contemplating the horrors of hell, but more time contemplating the joys of heaven. And we sometimes think, well, they're beyond our imagination, so why even try? But of course, we can still try. I mean, that's why we have mm -hmm. imagination. Mm. Um, and, and this, this fills us with motivation and he, he, he gives us he speaks about it. heaven he says may be likened to a great city gemstone each of its gates is miraculously fashioned from a single immense pearl and in that city the tranquil warmth and gentle light of spring shall prevail eternally and the air will be suffused with fragrant perfumes mm. offering ever new and intoxicating delights and the vividness of its reality shall surpass that of this present life, just as that of our current waking reality surpasses in vividness and intensity the visions of a dream. So, you know, I think this is uh, wonderful to think about, that everything we have in this life is going to seem just like a dream, just like a, you know, black and white television, compared to the intensity yes. of yes. the experience of heaven. You know, and, my... you know um, and if we want to imagine what heaven's like, if you think about the greatest joy and pleasure which we have in this world then you know multiply it many times um, infinite times and you'll you have an idea of it and i think that idea sometimes kind of almost freaks people out you know um, in doing that because well, they they feel is this selfish or is this hedonistic or whatever but no i mean god gives us this desire for for happiness for bliss for a reason and this desire, which is fundamental to our existence, will be fulfilled perfectly in the kingdom of heaven. Fulfilled perfectly in the kingdom of heaven. The, can, I'm going to read another one of the part of the book that you translated, Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity by Thomas Akempis, who I just, I just love him. When, if you read his books often enough, maybe eventually you'll learn to be humble because <laughs> there's so much humility in what he writes. But he writes this about our, our state in heaven about limitless joy your resurrected body freed from all corruption and taint of sin and mortality i mean right now sitting here 
I don't know if you feel anything, but I have a couple aches and pains, you know. And uh, you know, as you know, things, thing, my body um, is is just starting to face more more deterioration. You know, I'm not the young athlete I used to be. Uh, but can you imagine having a body that that is per, uh, you know a resurrected body? That if you say I'm going to go surfing, you can you can you know get get some get some good waves you know whenever you want to and surf them excellently. But yeah, yeah. your resurrected body, freed from all corruption and taint of sin and mortality, will also participate fully in the delights of this realm, no less than your soul. So your soul and your body will experience this immortality, impassibility, complete and unimpaired liberty and agility. I'm going to be a good surfer. And celestial yeah. beauty, all of these will be yours forever. And your mind will be enriched with all the plenitude of knowledge, righteousness, and contentment, such that it will know no disturbance or limitation or anxiety whatsoever. No, not even the shadow or memory of these shall remain. And then he says this. St. Uh, Saint, uh, uh, Blessed Thomas Akempis says this. Moreover, all of this you will enjoy with absolute and perfect security. You will no more need to flee. This is going to be what I look for. You will no more need to flee from any temptation of sin, nor ex resist any impulse to sin or evil, and no foe shall ever attack you. No m misfortune will befall you. Uninhibited, uninhibited liberty, as G.K. Chesterton once said, good things can run wild. Indeed. You know, and there often people say to me, um, you know, is heaven going to be boring? Well, you know, it sounds boring or whatever, but uh, because they think, you know, it's like just kind of sitting on a cloud and um, and quietly contemplating. Well, it's kind of true to some extent, but no, it's going to be an overflowing of every possible uh, joy, which in a way which completely transcends our imagination. And it's not something which is completely non uh, non physical because we believe in the resurrection of both the body and the soul. It's not a kind of platonic, um, you know, thing, state, but it is uh, something uh, all engulfing joy and pleasure for all eternity. We're talking with Father Robert Nixon, his newest translation, Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity by Thomas Akempis from the uh, Holy Trinity, the Abbey of the Holy Trinity in Narcia, Australia. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome to the bear wasnick adventure we want to invite you to go to our youtube channels where you can see uh father uh, robert nixon when we do all of our all of our uh videos that we do all of our interviews are posted there if you become a member there uh, you'll have access to uh, the the interviews, the Bear Wozniak adventures. I have uh, about two and a half years worth of uh, about 10 to 15 minute teachings where I'm down by the ocean usually and I lead you through teaching 
through the whole catechism in order. We don't just read it. We talk story about it and go deeper with it. But we're excited about something new Cindy and I are doing, too. It's called Adventures in Paradise. Cindy and I are going to take you sailing and surfing and snorkeling and uh, to, uh, bring you, invite you a little bit more into our life as we seek to go deeper with God. So we'll be, you'll be enjoying uh, the beauty of the islands uh, here in Hawaii, maybe the islands in the, in the Caribbean. And we will, but, we'll, but our, our essential uh, focus will be uh, to love God and to love God back. Um, and <laughs> so we invite you to go to their Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel and become a member. We're, we're here today with Father Robert Nixon. He's written a beautiful uh, translation on the Meditations on Death, uh, Preparing for Eternity, Eternity by Thomas Akempis. Tell, tell us, Father, uh, what motivated this? Uh, this there, there must have been something on your heart that motivated you to do this translation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Thomas Akempis is a very beloved author, but most people only know his imitation of Christ. Um, but he, in fact, wrote, and um, I was going through some of these, you know, looking for treasures which he's written, which haven't been translated into English, because not all of his works have been surprising, surprising as it is. And um, I came across, in an edition uh, dating from 1523, so one of the very earliest printed books, and uh, this this short work, Meditations on Death. And, you know, at first I thought, yeah, this is going to be a bit too frightening for a lot of people um, to read. It's probably not going to um, appeal to modern sensibilities. So I, but I sent a, a, a bit of a sample of it to Tan Books, and um, and they loved it. And and then it made me realise that you know this stuff actually isn't outdated, or if it if it seemed to be outdated, you know, the contemporary readers because they haven't experienced it so much. Um, it's really new and enlightening to, to them. So, um, you know, I, I felt really called by, uh, by God to bring this to a modern readership. And this is such a big, important part of our monastic life, you know, passing mm. on ancient mm. books. And, and that's what in Thomas the Middle Ag Ages, monks copy it. That's what he did, right? Wasn't he a copyist? He did. He copied out the Bible four times by hand. The complete works of Saint Augustine. The wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, so Saint, the complete works of Saint Augustine. These books back there, yeah. several volumes of that as St. Augustine. I remember once I decided, I'm going to read everything yeah. he wrote. And I go, oh, that's going to take me years. He, he copied all of St. Augustine's. Indeed. And, and yeah. who? And he who did. He did. And, and, and copying in those days was like a pretty difficult thing. You know, it was because it was ink and, and quills and, you know, um, and candlelight, so it was not what, as easy as what it would be today. So quite amazing character. And so a beautiful way, though, to memorize scripture too. I mean, his books are almost it almost flows back and forth. It flows through scripture. All of a sudden, you read and you go, "Oh, that's that's familiar to me. That's from the Bible," or that you know. So he just flows. He yes. just flows so beautifully. What what do you say to someone? Indeed. What do you say to someone who right now at this moment? I have a good friend of mine who's here in this building in Waikiki, uh, a strong man of God, uh, a Catholic. Uh, I've known him as a very powerful, powerful man, but I know that he's in hospice right now. What do you say to people who have family members who, or who are right now are right there uh, at death's door? What, what word do you have for them? You know, this is the time to show them um, the depth of love, to try to repair any any grudges or differences or wounds in relationship which have occurred. Because in the context of eternity, so many of these things don't matter uh, at all, that love becomes the overwhelming thing. Uh, so it is difficult to face the ending of one of our, our loved ones. But then to, to bear in mind that if they're a person of faith and good works and, and merit and so forth, we can be confident that they're actually going to a better place. So we can mourn that we're going to lose them from our life uh, in an immediate sense, but at the same time, you know, rejoice um, that they're going to a better place, to their eternal home. And we're not going to be separated from them forever, that it's only a, it's only a period, you know, until we'll be reunited in, in glory and eternal life. You know, Father? So I, I think that... 
we're, but, we're right to mourn, you know, um, about death. But at the same time, uh, in the case of a holy death, there should be a, a fundamental happiness. As you well. know, my, my father and my, my mother bo are both gone, and I was fortunate to be with them when they died. And when my mother died about 10 years ago, uh, I flew out from Hawaii. They had lived here in the islands. My dad was a Catholic deacon here in Molokai, where St. Damien was. And uh, they went back to where my, ended up back to their roots in the Midwest and in Minnesota. And I flew out to be with my mother. She was in a hospital in St. Cloud, Catholic hospital, I believe. And, uh, and uh, I brought lays, a dozen lays, uh, flower lays, fragrant lays, tuberose, and plumeria uh, on the airplane. And when I got to the hospital, I draped those flowers over her bed. And my family was all there, there with her in the evening. She'd been in a coma for many for many days, maybe 10 days. And she had suffered a lot, uh, Father. She had suffered a, a, a severe stroke and for maybe 15, probably more like 20 years of her life, she was unable to really talk. But she had this radiant smile. People were just drawn to her because she had this courageous joy, this courageous happiness. Just before she had that stroke, she wrote um, a letter and she read it to me. It was about a 15-page letter, and she said, I felt compelled to write this letter to my grandchildren that every year, once they reach the age of 12, to read this letter every year. And it was all this beautiful wisdom she had, her depth of love and wisdom for the Lord. Um, and then she had the stroke. She could have never written those words or said those words, but she was a living testimony to the Lord. And I just remember this, Father. When I was with her, and uh, it was early in the morning on a snowy, cold March day and I went in and I opened up the curtains where her room was and out over the Mississippi River uh, might have been the Missouri I forget what river it was but blanketed in snow and all the family came in and they had a they had a home on the on the on the in the North Woods where my dad used to give retreats to executives owners of businesses called Eagle's Rest. That was the name of their home, Eagle's Rest. It was off, uh, you know, many, many winding road, dirt roads to get to their house. You had to follow an eagle. They would nail a, a portrait of an eagle on different trees and stuff so you know which way to go, the flight of the eagle to get there. And their home was uh, uh, was called Eagle's Rest. You know, it, um, it talks about how he'll renew our youth like an eagle's. And that was their song on eagle's wings when my dad was ordained as a deacon. He played that song for my mother. Um, wind beat me my wings, I mean. But what happened at that moment, Father, is an eagle, a bald eagle, flew from the, you know, we're many stories up, flew up from this tree, flew right in front of the, her room in a circle eight. And as it left, my mother's breath changed dramatically. Kind of, I, I hate to, <laughs> I'm not saying she's St. Francis, but in a similar sort of way, this eagle that meant so much to my mother and my father flew, came, and left, and then her breath changed, and we knew that she would be her, she would be gone soon, uh, and and in about a, about three minutes, my my mother breathed her last. But I want to tell the people out there: this is what happened as she died, because this is an encouragement for you. As she died after being in a coma for all those ten days or a couple of weeks, as she was breathing her last breath, we heard her say, "Oh, oh, oh." Like you could see that she was seeing the beatific vision, that she was she was uh, being welcomed into that place that she longed for so much, and so be of good cheer. You know, we we have a future for us full of hope. If we seek Him, He will let us find Him. But right now, during this time, we need to be aware that we have a ticket to either heaven or hell. It depends on which what our decision is where we'll spend eternity. It's 100% up to us. You don't have to leave it in doubt. It's 100% up to you. Will you serve the Lord? Indeed. So, um, there, you know, this, this meditations on death is a practice everyone should do. We all live, we all die. It's a part of our life. And this, this book by Thomas Akempis, uh, published by Tan Books, is you know a, a wonderful way to do that you know to read to read a chapter um each day or whatever and to, to let it sink in and he writes so powerfully so vividly that the experience of of reading it um you know takes the soul on a great journey and you know what you can do too when you're reading 
the writings of a campus app, pray and ask him to pray for you. Like with, or if yeah. you're reading, if you're reading Thomas a campus, but if you're reading Thomas Aquinas, even more so. So <laughs> ask him to pray for you and to understand what he's written. But it's so beautiful because you, as you read books like this, I used, I used to sit on the beach and ha- have a cigar and 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 read at night the, the great the great books, Augustine, Aquinas, and all these wonderful. And people would text me, "Hey, what are you doing? Let's get together." Oh, I'm down on the beach with some friends. Well, who are you with? A campus, Aquinas, Augustine. <laughs> we can have fellowship with these saints, and where we do have a challenge, pr- pray and ask them to pray for us. Where can people find you, Father? People can find me uh, at our New Norcia um, website, newnorcia.com.au, or they can find me in person at the Monastery of New Norcia in Western Australia. And anyone who's either in Australia or visiting, I encourage you to visit because it's a remarkable place. It's like a piece of medieval Spain in outback Australia. So, it's really a town, um, yeah. not just a monastery, right? It's it a is. monastic town. I want to go. Is. is there any surf yeah. nearby? That's the question. Uh, about <laughs> a couple of hours drive we'll bring yeah, okay. you to some good surf and some good fishing and so forth so, uh, that's yeah. beautiful <laughs> thank you Father Robert Nixon OSB of the Holy Trinity the Abbey of the Holy Trinity in Arcea, Australia it's so good to have Australia represented in the, on the show I think you're only our second Oz to be on our show so thank you Father for the time you spent with us and uh, we, we encourage people to go to the web, go to the website but go to go to um, go to anywhere to get this book uh, by Tan Publishing, written by Thomas Akempis, Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity. I'm about to go. I'm about to go to Tortola, the British Virgin Islands, and my wife and I are going to be sailing for ten days. We're preparing for that trip, wow. Father. We're preparing for that trip. We're excited about it. But how much more so should we be preparing for eternity, for the bliss of the beatific vision? Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.